Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 20th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's just about a week since Patch Tuesday, but Adobe already released another update, this one affecting Adobe Acrobat and Reader. The update fixes seven vulnerabilities, and one of these vulnerabilities, an out-of-bounds memory write, is labeled as critical because it does lead to arbitrary code execution. Adobe is currently not aware of any exploits for this vulnerability and also doesn't consider exploitation to be imminent. And both Mac as well as Windows are affected by this vulnerability, given that Adobe did went through the trouble to actually publish a special bulletin for these vulnerabilities, I would still probably try to expedite updating these products. And Akamai released its state of the internet report. Now, based on Akamai's business, it's focusing heavily on denial of service attacks. And one attack that they're pointing out here that I have seen really on the rise sort of over the last year is credential stuffing. Credential stuffing is essentially a password brute force attack, but one that's a bit more intelligent in that it uses username and password combinations that have been leaked in some of these large leaks of such data. Now the problem to the defender is that many of these attacks originate from botnets, so they come from many, many different IP addresses. Also individual users are typically only hit a couple of times depending on how many different passwords the attacker has for the particular user ID. But what Akamai is pointing out that these attacks can quickly amount to a denial of service attack. Given the size of the botnets that are conducting these attacks and also the size of these data breaches that the bad guys have accumulated. Akamai's reporting of attacks that reached 8 billion different requests. So essentially the bad guys had 8 billion different username and password combinations to try out against the target site. In this case, it was of course a financial site, which is particularly interesting to the attacker. In my opinion, there isn't really that much you can do to stop an attack like this, given that they come from many, many different source IPs and the like. But what you can do is you can reduce the probability of your users falling for these attacks. And there are really sort of two approaches that I think work. The best one is go with some kind of two-factor authentication. That, of course, will typically make any passwords that your user may have leaked on other sites unusable. Secondly, if you can't do two-factor authentication, make sure users don't use passwords on your site that are known to have been leaked. And well, have I been pwned, for example, does offer a database of leaked passwords. So you can use that database and then check if users are attempting to use passwords that have already been leaked in some of these large breaches. And Tenable discovered a vulnerability in the widely used DVR for security cameras made by Nuo. Now, these are typically sold under the NVR Mini 2 brand, and the software or the web server really in these devices does suffer from a stack based buffer overflow vulnerability. In exploiting this vulnerability, an attacker could gain full access to the device. And Nuo did release a patch, so you can download it, can update your network video recorder in order to prevent becoming a victim. These type of recorders are often exposed to the internet to allow the remote review of video footage. Still wouldn't really recommend it. Maybe set up a VPN or something like that if you need remote access, but actually a stack-based buffer overflow, that's almost a pretty good vulnerability for or devices like that. Tenable used the moniker Pikaboo for this vulnerability. Not really sure if a vulnerability like this is worth it to actually be associated with a name like this. 
And then we got a winner for the podcast common sweepstakes. Michael, I notified him today and a Raspberry Pi is on the way to him. So if you have any comments, uh, best way to submit them is via the comment form. And hopefully I'll get around to select the September winner somewhat closer to October 1st. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.